and more sequencing yet. Okay, we made a number of changes. Let's go through them and make sure that you have them all and understand. We did add a rung that controls an output based on what steps are complete. This is the precursor for how the sequencer, the sequence of input conditions will cause a sequence of output conditions. Right now we're only controlling really we call it indicator 2 but it could represent anything in the process. These two rungs down here I'm going to delete them just to tidy up the logic and so now let's run it. Okay I'm going to I can hit the reset button and that clears everything out. Now the fact that this output is on doesn't mean anything because when you're running the machine, a process, when you get done with the sequence, there something's still going to be on because that's the position to start another sequence. So we go back up to the top. It's OK to start. And even if we hit the reset push button, which drops out OK to start, when I let go of the button, it's still OK to start. So I push the start push button. We've got cycle start going on. And just to test it, we can hit stop, and that drops out cycle start. We can start again. Okay, we're waiting for step one to complete. Sensor one, flip that on, back off, flip on two, flip on three. Now we have step three complete, which means, and by the way, remember that this originally was in there to clear the latched bits instead of using unlatches. This, however, can be used to clear these bits without completely restarting. It just clears the steps. You could argue it doesn't need to be in there. I left it in there in case some need came up for it. Okay, so we're step three is complete. So what are we waiting for here? We could reset it, but we're waiting for the sensors to get back in the home position. When they do, step three was complete. This cleared and step three complete here because the sensors are back, turned on B304, which brought everything back to scratch. So here we are, we're still in cycle start. So the machine is waiting for sensor one again. Sensor two, sensor three, then waiting for them to get back and it's back in the ready position. That's basically it for that logic. The last lab that we did was a little short one, and I'm not going to load it all in and execute through it, but it goes like this. We have a bit, input zero. It's controlled by the push button or the toggle switch, whichever you're using, and it one-shots an add instruction that adds or increments N7 colon 100. The address is unimportant. I just use N7 colon 100 because I could. At the beginning, every time I push input 0, I'm going to increment N7 100 by 1. And N7 100 represents the current step that we're commanding. So if we look at rung 1, if N7 100 equals 4, then we're going to clear N7 100, which means we can't increment it past 4. If we hit 4, it's going to clear. Then in, in rung 2, if N7100 equals 0, then we transfer a bit pattern that's stored in B3 colon 0. You can see there that you have no 1, you have a 2 and a 4. So you have a value of 6. Now we're actually displaying 6 in the output word. If N7100 is equal to 0, which is the starting point, then we move 6 into the output word, which means it's going to turn on the output 1 and 2. Not output 0, that's the first bit, so it turns on output 1 and 2. Then, when we push next step again, input 0, it's going to increment N7100 by 1, it's going to go to a value of 1. It went from 0 to 1, and that moves the value in B3.1. The next word in the B3 file, B3.1, that moves a value of 1. 
into the output. Now notice that it shows the output at 6. That's because rung 2 is still true in the image that you're looking at. But if we're operating this with input 0, then every time we push input 0, N7100 is going to increment by 1. So right now we're at the N7100 equals 0. But if we push the button up there, input 0, then N7100 would be equal to 1, and it would move B31 into output word 0, which means the out 0 would be on, and 1 and 2 would be off. Push the button again, we increment to 2 in N7100, and we move yet another bit pattern in there from B32. So B301 and 2 are the sequencer output images. And coincidentally, you'll notice that the binary and output values are equal. So B30 is decimal 6, and it moves 6 into the output. And then step 1, if you like, moves a 1 in, and step 2 moves a 2 in. And then when N7100 equals 3, we move a 3 in. When we do that, we say the sequence is done, and it's going to sit there until you push input 0 again. And guess what? When you increment from 3 to 4, rung 1, which comes right after rung 0, is going to clear N7 0. And then rung 2 will be true, and it starts over again. It's as simple as that. This is just another type of sequencing that you can use using integer values as your steps. That would be the equal statements at the beginning of rung 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5.